Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle news update. As you guys might have seen, the Pittsburgh Pro NPC IFBB event just went down this past weekend out in Pittsburgh, PA. That's Jim Mannion show, the president of the NPC and IFBB. And we know what happens at that show every year. In addition to the great pro event that they put on and the tremendous amateur NPC event, it's the guest posers. That's what we're there for, right? That's why people want to see what's going on. It's like the preview for the Mr. Olympia contest, although obviously not everyone's in shape, but we want to see our favorite bodybuilders, the guys who we're going to see on that Olympia stage, the guys who just got off the Olympia stage last September and battled it out. We want to see them on stage again for a little preview, get our juices flowing, so to speak, get ourselves excited about the upcoming Olympia. And as always, it was, it was a, uh, it certainly did not let us down. Maybe in some senses, let's get to that in a second. Let's talk about some of the guest poses that went out there. Let's talk initially about William Bonac. Bonac, who obviously lost, narrowly lost the Arnold Classic to Brandon Curry this year, who was the Arnold Classic champ the year before that, uh, two years ago, looked like he could have possibly you know, finished second and had a big Grammy at the Olympia. This guy's on a tear, let's face it. He's, he always brings tremendous conditioning to the stage. He's a consummate professional. His, I mean, he takes the sport very seriously. And he shows up here in Pittsburgh in really good shape. And, and let's face it, Bonac is not you know, preparing for anything right now. He's got the Olympia coming up, but he hasn't started his prep yet. He still looks very lean. He, you know, he brought a professional look to the stage. He didn't look sloppy on that stage. He showed up and, and showed us why he's one of the most consistent bodybuilders on the circuit right now and why we have to take him seriously for possibly winning the Mr. Olympia contest this year. He, he's not letting up. He doesn't have the gas, his foot off the gas for one second. And that's why, you know, guys like Sean Roden, who's Mr. Olympia, and some of these other top guys have to really be careful of Bonac. He's probably one of the most dangerous guys out there because he just never lets up. He doesn't take time off from the gym. He doesn't take his mind off the prize, which is the Mr. Olympia title. And he's won everything else at this point, all the major big titles. All he's got left is the Olympia. I know that he's gunning for that. Uh, him and Neil Hill certainly are putting together a strategy to win the Mr. Olympia contest this year. And he, he doesn't disappoint us. Uh, obviously, the next person we, we must address would be Brandon Curry, the guy who beat Bonac at the Arnold USA this year. Because Brandon Curry's stock has gone way through the roof. And, you know, structure-wise, he could be Mr. Olympia. No one would complain. Does he have a couple little genetic flaws, maybe? His legs can be a little bigger, possibly. But conditioning uh, is something that Brandon has mastered, finally. This is a guy who never came in in shape or never came in at his best. We saw him at his best at the Arnold. Maybe he might have the best upper body right now in bodybuilding, at least aesthetically pleasing and lines and roundness. Uh, the legs look good. They were in shape. You know, They're not his best body part. But they certainly don't detract from his physique at all. So, you know, here's a guy who beat Bonac, who's arguably the, the number two or three guy now in the world. And, and you have to consider Brandon Curry now the guy, one of the guys to beat. And the, these two guys, Bonac and Curry, who are very, very evenly matched, are going to be gunning for Rodin's title. And once again, we're going to get to Rodin in a minute and find out what's going on with that. So I think that uh, Curry, what he brings here to Pittsburgh is, is a very inflated look of what he was when he won the Arnold Classic. You know, some people I've heard, some I've watched some videos, and some people think he was in great shape. He wasn't in great shape, he was in good shape. But I've never seen Curry out of shape. Curry's never really smooth. He's just, he's larger than life right now. He definitely looks like he's put some size on. He had a good rebound off his contest. And that's, that's good news for Brandon Curry fans because he looks bigger uh, than he was, and that's really what he needed, a little bit more size. He doesn't need a lot more size. He needs a little bit more size so when he shows up at the Olympia, the judges see improvement, especially in the legs. I mean, his back looks enormous. His upper body is, is ridiculous. But the legs look like they came up. Once again, there is some water on his body. There's a lot of fluid retention. But it, it seem, he seems to be holding it well. He doesn't look sloppy by any means. He's certainly not the most shredded guy on stage. So I think this is a good look for Curry going into the, you know, the next coming weeks, which is going to be Olympia prep time. So I think he's in a great... Him and I think uh, between... Curry and Bonac, I think they're both in really good places at this point. Let's talk about the Blade Dexter Jackson. Uh, from what I understand, Dexter's going to be doing Tampa this year. 
uh, to requalify. Well, he doesn't really need to requalify for the Olympia. He's the Olympia champion of 2008. He can do any Olympia he wants. But I know Dexter, he wants to win another show. I think that's going to bring his total, grand total up to 30 wins. Uh, he's already got the record, but 30 sounds better than 29, right? Will Dexter retire this year? Who knows? You never know. Dexter's always hinting at that, and the guy just keeps getting better and better and better. I believe he's going to be 50 this year, and that would, you know, that, that's an accolade in and of itself. Hey, I'm 50. I'm still competing on the Olympic stage and beating guys, you know, half my age. So Dexter shows up here in really good shape. Obviously, if he's going to do Tampa, that's coming up, you know, in the coming weeks. He's still got plenty of time, obviously. But for Dexter, I think this is a, a bigger look than we've seen from him. But he's still holding good conditioning. And I think he's trying to come in a little. I think he tried to put a little bit of size on in the offseason. He thought maybe at the Olympia he was a little undersized for some of these guys, even though his conditioning was good. I know he's pissed off. I know he's going to come back. I know he wants to certainly beat Big Ramy at that, at that Tampa show. That would be a huge accolade for him. Give him tremendous momentum going into the Olympia if he can win Tampa and go into the Olympia with a win behind under his belt and with a victory over over a guy like Big Ramy's caliber. So and and let's face it, Dexter's beaten Ramy before. So but the, the the fact remains that Dexter is the oldest guy in the lineup, but he still looks great and he and he brings it here to Pittsburgh and uh, he might have the best conditioning on stage. I don't know, but he he certainly looks good. Not the best Dexter we've seen, but certainly very good as far in the conditioning standpoint. Let's talk about the biggest freak on stage, Ruli Winkler. Ruli, I, let's face it, it, I mean, it's about mass, it's about size, the fans love it, they want to see a super freak up there, all Ruli's got to go up there and do is and hit most muscular poses, right? If he hits enough most muscular, you know, that the fans have gotten their money's worth out of him. Obviously, Ruli wasn't the best Ruli Winkle we saw at the Arnold in the early shows this year. He was trying to play catch-up. He got a late start on getting the diet going. I think he probably should have skipped the beginning part of the year. He finished with a third place at the Olympia. He probably should have taken the whole year off or maybe thought about doing a New York Pro or something like that to give himself a little bit more time. The ruling we saw at the Arnold was not representative of what he's been bringing to the stage the past couple of years. Um, once again, Sometimes you just don't give yourself enough time. I don't think that is any indication that Ruli's head is not in the game. I think it's just a matter of he started too late. And we're going to see a much better Ruli Winkler at the Olympia because of the fact that he's probably way pissed off that he did not bring his best and allowed guys to beat him that should not have beaten him and that he probably has surpassed already. So this might be a sense of false confidence for some of the guys that did beat Ruli. That now going into the Olympia, Ruli will probably, assuming he shows up in shape, crush these guys. You know, Ruli's not in contest shape here, but hopefully he'll be starting his Olympia prep early enough this year to make sure that he is his best there. But I think this is a good Ruli. Once again, crowd favorite for sure. Let's talk about the man everyone is thinking about, Mr. Olympia. 2018, Sean Roden. We all wanted to see what he looked like. Look, we've heard the rumors that he, was, he hasn't really been training that hard. He just really got started. He's had, uh, obviously, he's not training with uh, Chris Cycle Lewis now, and he's back with Charles Glass. So I, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes because I talked to all these guys, but no one wants to give me a straight answer. Obviously, something happened. We do know that Roden and, um, and Chris Cycle Lewis were in the UK with Chris Aceto for a big tour they did earlier in the year. Now, all of a sudden, there's no talk going on there. It seems that Roden is back with Charles Glass, from what I understand. And that's going to be the team getting ready for the Olympia. Is that good? I don't know. Chris Cycle Lewis, you know, did get him to the Olympia and did help him win the Olympia. And that, that's something that, you know, you cannot take for granted. Is Chris Cycle Lewis the kind of guy that pushes guys really hard, 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 hard? Yeah, but maybe that's what Sean Roden needs to get his ass in the gym and, and train because he's obviously not in shape here in Pittsburgh. Uh, not only is he not in shape, he looks like he's under-muscled. Like he, he took off so much time that he definitely lost muscle. Now, the great thing about being a genetic freak is that the stuff comes back pretty quickly. I don't doubt that Sean will be back to his normal musculature at the Olympia and that he will be in shape because I know Chris Aceto will probably torture him to death to do it. But is that the way he wants to get ready for the Olympia? Is that going to help him to be better than he was last year? Probably not. So what that does is it leaves the door open now. It leaves the door open for guys like a Bonac, you know, like even like a Dexter, okay? Um, guys that are hungry, like a Ruli Winkler, you know, that guys that want to win the Olympia, that are dedicating every waking moment to that. And I think it's a mistake that Sean let his foot off the gas uh, early in the season. I don't know if he had any injuries or anything was going on because he's been hush-hush. 
Uh, I think he, he knows how to win, obviously, shows. He knows how to win the Olympia. He did it last year. So, obviously, he's still the guy to beat, but this representation of himself that he brings to Pittsburgh, and he obviously knew he was going to have to guest pose in Pittsburgh, is not a good one. And I think, you know, he looked like he was kind of joking around up there. He had a hat on, like he was hanging out of the street corner drinking beers, you know. But, obviously, he knew he was not in shape. But, having said that, maybe this, you know, uh, this guest posing and the fans' reaction to it, which I'm sure is not going to be good, will be a fire that will light underneath Sean's butt and get him, you know, really pushing hard over these next, you know, 20 or so weeks, whatever it is, uh, leading up to the Olympia to ensure that he is in his best shape uh, possible. Let's face it, he's got a lot on the line. He's got the title, but he's got a lot of money, too. He won $400,000 last year, so I know Sean wants that money. I know he wants that title again. Can he do it? I don't know. This is not a good indication, but let's face it, shows are not won 20 weeks before the show. They're won the day that people are standing on stage. So let's see what happens. I have to say, in summation, I was imp very impressed with William Bonac. I was very impressed with Brandon Curry. Dexter looks great heading into Tampa. Ruley is looking huge. And uh, I think that this is going to be a great Olympia. Even if we don't get the superstars we're all, you know, in the back of our mind hoping we get, Kai Green, Phil Heath. I think this lineup is going to be enough that we're going to be super excited to see who's going to emerge as the 2019 Mr. Olympia because I don't think this contest is over by any means. I don't think it's in the bag for Sean Roden. He showed us today that he is vulnerable. Let's see if he can bring it all together. For now, though, I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle News Update.